All right, guys. For the week, the dose for the week, we're taking a, we're talking about simplifying radicals, Pythagorean inequalities, and then today we're going to talk about the 45, 45, 90, which is a special right triangle. But the the numbers 45, 45, 90 refer to the the measurement of the angle. So that's what that that one's called 45, 45, 90. So <coughs> the first two, like I said, you guys already talked. We already talked about, but uh, the last topic we're going to learn today in our quizzes tomorrow. So there are going to be some examples. Usually examples I don't have you guys copy them, but this one you guys will copy them. Yes. Um, it's a short week, so no review this week. So today we're going to consider that kind of like a review with the notes. The first thing, simplifying radicals, um, like I said, usually the examples I don't have you copy them down. But um, in this case, we do. So to simplify radicals, split into prime numbers, groups outside, and singles inside. The sentence by itself doesn't make much sense, so that's why I'm going to have you guys copy the example. So to simplify radicals, split into prime numbers, groups outside, and singles inside. But in an example, we have the square root of 60. So we start by splitting it first. And I'm going to come and split it as 4 times 15. I'm thinking any two numbers that multiply equals 6. So I wrote 4 and 15. Then my 4, I'm going to split it as 2 times 2. And my 15, I'm going to split it as 3 times 5. So I'm splitting it. Then I notice that 2's are a group because I want 2 numbers per group. Make sure it's the same number. So I have a group, and I have two singles. So I'm going to finish saying that radical 60 is 2 radical 15. Right, the 15 because I multiply my singles. Right, if there's more than one single, multiply them for the singles. If there's more than one group, multiply your groups. So radical 60 simplifies to 2 radical 15. Right? Like I said, make sure you guys copy the example. It's just on your notes for us to understand. So that was the first topic. I think by the notes we're reviewing it. <coughs> Any questions on that? Yes. Are you going to do one with like, the number of I'm gonna because I didn't include that on the notes. I'm gonna skip that on the on the quiz. All right. Now the other thing for Pythagorean inequality. So let's copy that thing down for right triangle. We have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. For an acute triangle, we have a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared. And for an obtuse triangle, we have a squared plus b squared less than c squared. The only difference is the sign. Give you guys time to talk to that. No, we're gonna. We're also gonna take notes for the One thing for us to remember, for the right triangle, the equal sign, you guys know that one, so I'm not, I'm not going to explain that much. But if I look at the c squared, if it's smaller than the other two combined, if c squared is small, I'm going to call that acute. Remember, acute, we're thinking small. So I'm looking at c squared. If c squared is smaller, then it's acute. If c squared is bigger, obtuse. So always look at the value of c squared. Right, if c squared is smaller than the other two combined, it's acute. If c squared is bigger than the other two combined, obtuse. Any questions on that? All right, now, let me take a look at the 45, 45, 90. So I'm going to draw a triangle, 45, 45, 90. You guys see my 
my angles. So for that triangle, because two angles are the same, I'm going to say my triangle is an isosceles triangle. All right, for example, let me say that the two measurements are three. The two sides, those three, will always be the same. It's an isosceles triangle. Do me a favor, copy that triangle. And then for right now, we're going to write a three. Three is an example. It could be any other number. So the only thing that we need to remember to begin with is that the two sides are equal, right? It's an isosceles triangle. There's a formula for us to find out the hypotenuse. But before I give you guys a formula, let's take a look at this as Pythagorean theorem. Let me call the side x, the hypotenuse, let me call it x. So I'm going to write 3 squared plus 3 squared equals x squared. And right? I'm going to write Pythagorean theorem. So let's copy that thing down. Right? I'm going to do this Pythagorean theorem. So if you guys happen to forget the formula, rely on Pythagorean theorem. Like I'm going to give you guys a formula, a way of doing it. But if you forget it, do it using Pythagorean theorem. We know what 3 squared and 3 squared are, so I'm going to say 9 plus 9 is x squared. But then we know what 9 plus 9 is, so 18, so we're going to say 18 is x squared. So x squared is 18, so that means that radical 18 is x. Alright, the square root of 18 is x, but then we know how to simplify radicals. I'm not going to show the steps, but we know how to simplify a radical. So I'm going to say 3 radical 2 is x. All right, we know how to simplify radicals. So if I give you that the two sides are 3, you can find out that the hypotenuse is 3 radical 2. So let me put it there for right now, 3 radical 2. Now the formula, to make this easier, if I give you guys the side, for you to find out the hypotenuse, just multiply the side by radical 2. 3 times radical 2. That's basically all you do. So if the side was 5, I will say the hypotenuse is 5 times radical 2. If the, if the side was radical 2, I will say the hypotenuse is 2. Because right? radical 2 times radical 2 is 2. The, whatever the measurement of the side, in order for you to get the hypotenuse, multiply by radical 2. If I give you the hypotenuse instead, and you need to find the leg, instead of multiplying, divide by radical 2. It's going to make more sense right now when we look at the, at the homework. Can I take this off? All right, so let's take a look at the homework for the 45, 45, 90. Find the missing side length. So we need to find two lengths. Leave your answers as radicals in simplest form. For space, let me take the instructions out. I know that the two sides are equal. The two legs are equal. So if one side is 7 radical 2 over 2, I'm going to say y is 7 radical 2 over 2. All right, there's not much to do on it. Just copy it. So for y, I solved it as 7 radical 2 over 2. Now for the hypotenuse, for me to solve the hypotenuse, I'm going to start with what I have, 7 radical 2 over 2, and multiply it by radical 2. So for the hypotenuse, multiply it by radical 2. Now looking on the top, how much is 7 radical 2 times radical 2? 14, good. So we have 14 over 2, which is better known as 7. For those of you that are wondering why the 14 came along, radical 2 times radical 2 is 2 times 7, 14. So remember, if you have the side, for you to get the hypotenuse, multiply by radical 2. So looking at question number 2, the value of n is just going to be 3 radical 2. Right, we just copy. Now for the hypotenuse, I'm going to start with 3 radical 2, which is the number that I had, and then multiply by radical 2. How much is that? 6. So those are my two values. Right, not that hard. Let's take a look at questions three and four. Let me start with number four first. 
Looking at question number four, what's the value of what? Radical 6 over 2. Good. Now for x, we're going to start with radical 6 over 2, and then let me multiply by radical 2. What do we get? Because in order for us to get the hypotenuse, you multiply the side by radical 2. Remember, that's what we did with questions 1 and 2? No matter what. Always multiply by radical 2. So we have radical 12 over 2. But make sure your radicals are simple. Radical 12, isn't that 2 radical 3? Right, if you simplify radical 12. Yeah? All right, so we have 2 radical 3 over 2, which is better known as... Radical 3. Notice how we had 2 radical 3 divided by 2. 2 divided by 2 cancels out. <coughs> so I only have radical 3. So in order for us to get the hypotenuse, always multiply the side by radical 2. No matter what number it is, multiply by radical 2. Notice how number 3, this one, I'm giving you guys the hypotenuse. So don't multiply by radical 2, in this case, divide by radical 2. So for me to solve for y, let me write it over here. I have 4 radical 3 to begin with, but in this case, let me divide by radical 2. Notice how this time I put the radical 2 at the bottom. Because when you divide, you put it at the bottom. When you multiply, you put it on top. But remember how yesterday we said no radicals at the bottom? So let me multiply top and bottom by radical 2. So on the top, I have 4 radical 6. At the bottom, I have 2. We're good? We're good on how I got my numbers? Right? The, the, the 4, on the top, the 4 was this. It's going to be simplified, yes. But uh, before before we simplify, yes. Before we simplify, <coughs> the 4 was already now outside. The 6, so I multiply my radical. 3 times 2 gave me 6. Now the bottom, let's say uniquely radical 2 times radical 2. We can call it radical 4, but radical 4 is 2. Now let me just simplify, but make sure you simplify only the whole numbers with the whole number. Don't mix the whole number with the radical. So my answer will be... 2 radical 6 for e. <coughs> right, whole numbers with whole numbers, radicals with radicals. Don't, don't mix and match. 4 divided by 2 is 2 radical 6. Remember, don't, don't, don't mix a whole number in the radical. You cannot, don't mix and match. Only whole numbers with whole numbers and radicals with radicals. Don't, let's say, don't mix and match. Right, let's take a look at number five. For number five, we're given the side. How big is y? Five radical two over two. Okay, so that was easy. Now for us to solve for x, let me start with five radical two over two. Which, would, which is what I was given. But in this case, let me multiply by, by radical 2. Remember, in order for us to get the hypotenuse, we multiply by radical 2. So what do we have on top? 10, radical two. 10 over 2, which is just 5. I know I said don't mix uh, radicals with, mix with whole numbers. But technically, when we multiply radical 2 times radical 2, it becomes a whole number 2. Mm -hmm. So that's why we can combine that with the 5. If you look at number 6, n is just 2 radical 2. Right? n is simple. For us to find m, I'm going to start with 2 radical 2 times radical 2. How much is that? 4. 
Remember, for us to find the hypotenuse, multiply by radical two. If I'm giving, if I give you guys the hypotenuse, then in that case, divide by radical two. As a matter of fact, let me find an example where I give you guys the hypotenuse. Here's question number nine. Number nine, you are given the hypotenuse. So for us to find x, I'm going to go 3 divided by radical 2, right? This case, I divide. But then make sure you simplify your radical, no radicals at the bottom. So multiply top and bottom by radical 2. So you're going to finish with 3 radical 2 over 2 for each of the two sides. And make sure no radicals at the bottom. Does that make sense? Why the two at the bottom? Because yeah. radical two times radical two is two. Yeah. The, the thing is, no radicals at the bottom. The top, we can have radicals, but no radicals at the bottom. If we have any radicals left, like we do, make sure it's simple. Yeah. But now, let me show you guys something. Um, let me skip to question number, number 18. For number 18, I'm giving you guys the hypotenuse. 4 radical 6. For us to find u and v, we have to divide by radical 2. Right. If I give you the hypotenuse, for you to find the side, divide by radical 2. Let me do this first the long way. Then I'm going to show you guys an easier way, a shorter way. Like I said, let me do it the long way first. No radicals at the bottom, so radical 2 and radical 2. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by radical 2. So I get 4 radical 12 over 2. Make sure you simplify radical 12. I know radical 12 is 2 radical 3. Right, we know how to simplify radicals. Radical 12 is 2 radical 3. So on the top, I have 8 radical 3 over 2. Like I, I know it seems a little lengthy, but I'll show you guys something in a minute. So I'm going to short this by 4 radical 3. Like I said, I divided 8 divided by 2. I simplified that. So I get 4 radical 3. That's it, right? So each of my answers is... 4 radical 3. Now let me show you guys an easier way. We had 4 radical 6 divided by radical 2 to begin with. You can simplify by combining your radicals. We can simplify radical. 6 divided by 2. So that's going to give me 4 radical 3. Right? You can simplify your radical. Remember I told you guys earlier, combine whole numbers with whole numbers and radicals with radicals. If you have radicals, combine them. So that gives me 4 radical 3, which is the shorter way. Make sure, like if you notice, each question has two answers. There's two sides missing. Make sure you write both sides. So your question on the quiz each question is worth one point, but each of those answers is half a point. You're missing one of the answers, you're missing half a point. Right? Make sure you answer both answers. Any questions? Yes. Number 11. So looking at number 11, we know B is 2, because right? those sides are equal. For the hypotenuse, I'm going to go 2 times radical 2, which is already simple, and then that's it. Yep, so 2 radical 2, yeah. 
over a multi mine. It's like total random for two and then divided by one to two and then one to two. Remember, we don't have. I will give. I gave you the side, so you have to multiply by radical two. You don't have to get rid of the radical because you don't have it at the bottom of our fraction. So like, what do we do on number nine? Number nine. Okay. The the thing on this one is for number nine. I gave you the hypotenuse. Okay, any other questions? There's another right triangle, special right triangle, the 30, 60, 90, but that's next week. Okay. This week we're only looking at the 45, 45, 90. Remember, with that I'm referring to the angles. All right, any questions?